Unlike the real estate industry, where all properties are very nicely put together in one place in the MLS, the M&A industry is nothing like that. It's murky at best. There's not a centralized place for anything. You gotta go to hundreds of websites to get the listings. And when you do, you'd be hard pressed to find anything readily available in terms of financials or anything like that. So murky and it's difficult. So how do you as a buyer stand up in a, stand out in a crowded place? How do you get to those sellers with the highest SDEs? How do you have those conversations? How do you find the sellers? How do you find where they congregate? How do you really stand out? So that's really the subject of this video. So I'm gonna show you the best ways, best ways to stand out as a buyer in the M&A world. Let's get to it. What's up everybody? Welcome to my channel. I am your host, Leo Landaverde, business broker and commercial lender, helping you buy and scale a profitable business. You are a small business owner looking to increase your wealth by buying a profitable business or a W2 employee or corporate executive sick and tired of the rat race and one out and the best way to do so is by buying a profitable business, you are in the right place. Please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell. You'll be notified every Thursday when new content comes out. Deal flow, deal flow, deal flow. It will always be about deal flow. So the reason why you're not getting enough deal flow is because you are sitting in your chair and every night for about half an hour to an hour looking at bids by sell and see what makes sense for you and being very reactive. You're waiting for the listings to come. You shop around. You really don't know what industry next you should be looking for. You're looking for cash flow and you want as much of it. But that, so if that is your approach to buying a business, you probably will never buy a business. You'll be another statistic, which I know those are statistics and I've said them before, only 10% or less of all the buyers out there actually manage to buy a business. Doesn't make sense, right? Well, it does if you realize that this is more of a marathon than a sprint. A lot of people give up through halfway through the process because they don't have the fortitude or the wherewithal to stick around and actually do it right like the pros do. So, and so here is how you do it, and I have a few notes that I'll be referring to. So deal flow, how do you create deal flow? I suggest that you have a bifurcated approach on probably on market about 30, 40% of the time and 60 to 70% of the time you do off market. You need to create your own conversations. You need to act as your very own broker and have off market conversations with sellers really before, long before they wanted to talk to a broker, they're talking to you. So which means you have no competition. The M&A world, it's super hot. There is 15 plus buyers for every good listing out there, any good listing out there. How do I know that? Because I am a business broker and this is the world that I live in. I put a good business in the market, I get 10, 15, 20 or more qualified buyers giving me their personal financial statement bio profile and signing in the NDA and wanting to get on. They speak the language, they know how to communicate with me and there they go. They get the information before everybody else does, may make offers before anybody else does and the business is off the market before it even gets them to the market. So what I call pocket listings. So how do you stand out? All right. How do you stand out in a crowded marketplace? How do you get the attention of the sellers you desperately need? Okay, number one, you need to have a clearly defined buy box. I have had many conversations um, uh, with, 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 with you guys, for my audience, and have conducted many calls. And I can tell you that most people don't know how to position themselves in a buy box. I teach some of this stuff inside of our group in painstaking detail. You need to figure out how to what, how do you look your best? How do you save the time? A broker or a seller will screen you out and if you send them a resume, they're gonna look and they're gonna be overwhelmed by all everything it says. And they're gonna look, they're gonna give you five seconds, they're gonna look the other way. Now, there's a way that you communicate the bullet points of what you're trying to do, your location, your, your industries that you're focused on, your geographical footprint, your management experience, your financial wherewithal. There's a way to present that in a very digestible way. And that's what I teach. You need to have a clearly defined buy box. Number two, you need to present yourself as an industry insider. Buzzwords, acronyms, all of that stuff helps because Think about it from a perspective of a seller. You know, eagles like to fly together, right? 
birds of a feather fly together. So if, if you are speaking someone's language, the buzzwords, the KPIs, the, the acronyms that are unique to that industry, chances are that a seller is going to want to talk to you because you think you're one of them. Okay? So that's the thing. You need to present yourself as an industry starter. So are you stuck in what to do next? If you watch my videos, you watch them, but you don't really know what comes next. Deal analysis, making offers, talking to lenders, getting yourself pre-qualified. If any of this is frustrating to you, I'm sure it is because it is for a lot of buyers. So here's what I offer you. The opportunity to work with me and get into a free complimentary call and I'll give you a customized game plan for you to help you get to where you need to go if it means buying a business because it's all I do. I want you to connect with me. You can drop me a comment below or just send me an email. My email address is up here in the description section of this video and let's have a conversation and let me help you where you need to go. Okay, thank you so much for watching my videos. Most people are sitting outside, from the outside looking in, there's like, being, sit, like sitting outside of a restaurant and everybody's having a good time inside the restaurant at the tables with wine and food and you're sitting outside looking in from the glass trying to figure out how to get in. Well, the people that know how to pierce the code and they actually present themselves as industry insiders, those are the ones that get in to have those conversations with the sellers. I know that because that's exactly what I practice. That's exactly what I do. That's exactly, I have the buy box, I have the industry insider knowledge, and I can have conversations with people because I'm not afraid because I already know what they're gonna ask before they ask it, and I will have the answers. Third, okay, after you have a clearly defined buy box and you present yourself as an industry insider, you need to demonstrate your financial capabilities. How do you do that? You need to know exactly what is the upper limit of the, your purchasing power, which means how much business can you buy? So say you have $100,000, your higher limit is a million. You may be able to go a little more, maybe you know plus, plus 5% or under it because that's the range. Now, Yes, we start with the 10%, but plus minus a couple of points because there may be con you know, considerations in type of the seller. You might be, have a very strong financials or very strong cash flow on the deal. You may not need 10%. The seller, you may actually walk away with working capital from the seller. There's a lot of things that can influence and can um, affect how this, the, per the range works. But if you have demonstrated financial capabilities, then the sellers are going to want to talk to you. That doesn't mean that you have to walk around with your financial statements or your bank statements and be able to show them anybody wants. I have never needed to show any, uh, any, any bank statements to anybody, nor any of the buyers that I work with need to do that if you know how to position yourself doing what I tell you to do and playing like the pros do. Okay, so here are some strategies on finding businesses, the sellers, and nurture those relationships. So industry trade groups. Where if you, you know, and this whole thing only works if you narrow down your search to about three industries. You do not want to be a jack of all trades. You have to be a subject matter expert in a handful of industries. Hence, you're only going to know so many acronyms and NAICS codes because everything else is noise. The, 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 so this is where you go deep within the industry. You need to understand who the players are, the competitors, the vendors, the, the type of business that they do. So the industry trade groups is a great place to congregate and see anybody who is over, you know, who is touching that industry from vendor, from the customers, or the one degrees away. Those are the people that actually know what's going on. Those are the ones that know the sellers you're gonna wanna talk to and be happy to introduce you. And it's a longer game. So I think a lot, what a lot of people love to the on-market stuff is because it's quick, you know, it's rapid gratification. You know, you do something and they get back to you and you think that's the end of it. That's just the beginning. So the off-market stuff takes a little longer. You have to, you know, practice some sell. You need to be able to sell yourself. You need to be able to raise your hand. You need to be able to do visit the industry groups, which is something that I do in the industries that I care about. Social media. You, need, you know, there is plenty of Facebook groups for the industries that you have interest in, as well as LinkedIn groups for those specific interests. You need to get to know people, right? No seller is going to want to sit down and sell you their business if they don't have a relationship with you. It's like dating and on the first day try to put a, a ring on somebody's finger, you, have a, you don't really know them. There's no different when it comes to relationships and buying and selling a business. Why would a seller who's built a business for the last 20 years just part ways with it just because you showed up to their door today? 
Third, mailers. I love mail campaigns. All fashion snail mail still works and it's proven to be very, very profitable for me. Just try that. So, um, the goal of this exercise is that you get to talk to the sellers, that you get to have those conversations and over time, you know, um, and develop that relationship. So when they're ready to sell, um, they'll be wanting to talk to you. Now, here's a quick story. We have a weekly, uh, we have multiple calls in our mastermind. If you want to know more about it, please reach out to me. And we were having a conversation today as to, you know, how to present your, how to create a buy box. And one of our members actually said that because if he's doing such a good job for me, by the way, this guy has a deal under contract. Tony, one of our one of our members, you know, he's got a deal under contract. He should be closing in the next 60 days. But because he developed such a great relationship with some brokers in a specific industry, the brokers are still calling him with other deals that are very, very profitable because he he can't buy them all. He's gonna be able to assign it to somebody who will within our group. Community is everything. So those are the things that I would do um, if I wanted to stand out in a crowded marketplace. And please follow my tips, subscribe to my channel, let's connect. For a limited time, I'm giving away my cash flow calculator and buyer's checklist. This is a kind of a two document combo that thousands of people have downloaded. It's very useful. Actually, I have the Deal Analyzer 2.0, which is proven to be very useful. In this next generation of the Deal Analyzer, there's a lot more assumptions, more calculations, more boxes, and make it simpler for you to calculate cash on cash return, debt service coverage ratio, and the like. It is yours to keep. All you have to do is click on the link below.